go to Google and type Rathod's IAS. Then you can see our website Rathod's IAS Academy. There you have to click on login or register in the blue color. So if you have not registered yet, you have to click on do not have account and fill the details. So after once you have login, click on the courses. There you can see course list. And in this course list, you can see wide range of courses. Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 1st June 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see code. So today's code is about sustainable development. So this sustainable development is seen highly in news and you can expect mains questions in as well as essay regarding this topic. So please be prepared with the codes regarding this sustainable development. So sustainable development is a peace policy of the future. So it is according to this clause. So here clause says that sustainable development is a peace policy of the future. So if you are talking about the first article which is mainly focusing on recent verdict of Supreme Court regarding the release of one person who mainly involved in this Rajiv Gandhi assassination case. So this article is important from your GS paper to under polity. So here we are going to see about article 142 of Indian constitution and here we are also going to see the partnering parts of governor and as well as president. That topic is very important from your prelims point of view. So actually this case is famously known as A.G. Paravi Verlan and the Rajiv Gandhi assassination case. Okay. So, A.G. Perari Volan and the Rajiv Gandhi assassination case. So, why it is in use? So, recently our Supreme Court, which is Apex Court of India, it's mainly ordered for the release. Okay. Ordered for the release of this A.G. Perari Volan. Okay. Perari Volan. So, he is one of the seven convicts in this PM Rajiv Gandhi assassination case. So why was the release uh, which is mainly done by the Supreme Court? So why was this person which, who is mainly released by the Supreme Court? So if you see here, Supreme Court which mainly invoked its extraordinary powers under this Article 142 of Indian Constitution. Okay, actually this convicts mother and as well as large segments of population and numerous political parties, they have campaigned for his release because he was only 19 years of age at the time of assassination of Rajiv Gandhi and he received much sympathy from the people. So because of this, he a convict's mother and as well as large segment of people and even numerous political parties, they mainly uh, have campaigned for his release. And even governor also recommended for the release by the state cabinet in 2018. So in 2018 also here governor was recommended for the release by the state cabinet as well and this advice which uh, which already which already forwarded to this president of india so now center which mainly contended that under iep's that is indian penal code so there are instances which are mainly involving murder fall under this president's exclusive jurisdiction and when it comes to remission of the life sentence also which mainly comes under this president's exclusive jurisdiction. So, if we are talking about what is the stand of Supreme Court. So, why this decision which is mainly taken by Supreme Court. So, as you all know state. So, state has jurisdiction over this remission. So, over this remission, it is one of the pardoning power of president as well as governor. So, under this remission here, state has jurisdiction. So, because of this, we are having one article that is Article 161 of Indian Constitution, which mainly talks about power of governor. And this article says that governor should be bound by the state's cabinet decision. Okay, so because of this, so whenever the state cabinet, whenever recommended governor for the release of this so and so person, here governor, he made a referral to the president of India. Okay. And the governor's remission powers, which is mainly used only uh, on the advice of a state cabinet. So, you are also having under this criminal procedure code, the release of those offenders, they would require the approval of the center. So, whenever, whenever there is a need of uh, remission or whenever we are going for release of any offender means here, here we also need the approval from center. So, because of this, as the recommendation which is mainly given by state cabinet to governor, he mainly made 
or he mainly forward to president mainly to take approval of center for the release of the so and so person it is according to criminal procedure code so we are talking about what is the issue in this judgment the supreme court unable to resolve the question of lack of deadline so what is the deadline for the president and as well as governor to make decision on this topic so what is the deadline so there is no clarity regarding what is the deadline so because of this we can see there will be the delays which was mainly seen in this presidential decisions so we are talking about pardoning powers of president and as well as governor so in our indian constitution some articles which mainly talks about this so especially article 72 regarding president article 161 regarding governor they are mainly talking about this pardoning powers of a president as well as governor respectively so these articles article 72 and article 161 of indian constitution they mainly empowers president and as well as governor of state mainly to give some pardons for example commute remit remission and as well as reprieve so the power to pardon which mean exercised by president and governor they are mainly based on advice of this council of ministers and pardon means substantially or substantial it mainly helping in saving the innocent person from being punished due to miscarriage of justice the aim of this pardoning power of a governor and as well as our president it is to correct it is to correct possible judicial errors so if there are any judicial errors which mainly happen so mainly to correct this possible judicial errors okay which mainly occurs in trail so we are going to use this pardoning powers of this governor and as well as uh, our president under article 161 and 72 of indian constitution respectively so if we are talking about article 142 of indian constitution which mainly it mainly talks about some extra or we can talk about the power of supreme court so if we are talking about article 142 of uh, indian constitution which mainly empowers our apex court that is supreme court mainly to exercise of its jurisdiction may pass such a degree such such order is necessary for doing complete justice in any cause of or any matter which is pending before it okay so if there is any matter which is pending before it so it can invoke some special powers under this 142 article mainly to exercise the jurisdiction and earlier supreme court used this article 142 in many instances in many cases for example highway liquor case okay highway liquor ban case that means on highways there should not be any liquor shop and next one is Taj trapezium order vishaka that guidelines so in these cases also here our supreme court which mainly invoked this article 142 of our indian constitution okay so this is about this topic and now let's try to say next topic it is regarding electric vehicles so here this article which is mainly talking about this fame to scheme and we are we need to know about what are the challenges that we are facing in this electric vehicles and why there is increasing of using of electric vehicles we need to know the reasons and even we need to know about way ahead so this was some important dimensions that we are going to see in this article so this article will be important regarding gs paper 2 under governance and even gs paper 3 under science and technology here we are talking about electric vehicles so if you see here we are mainly seeing in this image three wake three wheeler three wheeler electric vehicles are mainly used so in hyderabad especially in many gullies you can see here electric uh, autos they are mainly running okay uh, so i also use this electric autos especially to go to so and so areas okay so here what happened if you are comparing with the two wheelers and if you are comparing with three wheelers and more than four wheelers like buses so here three wheelers are mainly highly in use regarding this uh, highly in use regarding this electric vehicles if you are talking about these two wheelers there are number of articles that we already read, uh, studied regarding so batteries are mainly caught into fire especially these electric vehicles so because of this here people they are having very much fear to uh, go for these two wheelers and even recently electric buses which are charged at the star charge station they also set up uh, they also caught a fire so because of this there is also fear which may increase the people to use this electric vehicles so now in this context let us try to understand what is this fame scheme so if we are talking about push for this electric vehicles in india which was renewed when our phase two of this of fame okay that is faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicle scheme in India. 
so the outlay of this scheme it is about 10000 crore rupees and this scheme which mainly approved in year 2019 so now if you are talking about electric vehicles ambitions in india so we are mainly doubling down our ambitions in this electric vehicles so we are mainly focusing on increasing of demand of this electric vehicles at home so we are also focusing on indigenous electric vehicle manufacturing industries as well so initially here we envisaged this scheme for this three years and later on we came with extension of some amendments in this fame too okay scheme so the important aim of this scheme it is to support about 10 lakh two wheelers and 5 lakh three wheelers and about 55,000 four wheeler passenger cars and about 7,000 e-buses electric buses so the target here is 10,000 two wheelers 5 th 5 lakh okay 10 lakh two wheelers 5 lakh e uh, that is electronic uh, sorry electric three wheelers and about 55,000 four wheeler vehicles and about 7,000 electric buses so three years into this fame to the numbers has been lagging so it is one of the important challenges that we are facing and as part of this fame to the government also made a push for indigenous manufacturing with number of automaker okay automakers as well so if we're talking about some facts regarding this scheme so if i am not explaining about the scheme then how can you understand what is going on so you need to know the background as well so my analysis should be like a hundred percent and i should give the each and everything which is important from upsc point of view for the viewers right so if you're talking about this fame to scheme so this fame india is part of a national electric mobility mission plan it is about this uh, it is a part of this national electricity or electric mobility mission plan so the main thrust of this fame scheme it is to encourage so we are mainly focusing on encouraging of electric vehicles and how you are pro uh, encouraging this electric vehicles for example by providing subsidies so whenever subsidies we are providing means the cost will be less so because of this here people they will be uh, motivated to go for this uh, electric vehicles right so here we are mainly providing subsidies to motivate the people and here this national electric mobility mission which is a uh, mainly focusing to allow hybrid and as well as electric vehicles to become the first choice for the purchasers so if i want to go for purchasing of any bike okay for example let us take scooty or like that so i have if i am getting subsidy means yes obviously i will be i will be uh, having the choice to go for this electric vehicles first so this is the one important uh, aim of this uh, national electric mobility mission plan and here we are also focusing on decreasing of uh, liquid fuel consumption as well especially in this automobile sector so here the scheme which mainly covers even hybrid and even electric technologies like mild hybrid strong hybrid plug-in hybrid and battery electric vehicles so if you're talking about monitoring authorities of this fame scheme that is department of heavy industries the ministry of heavy industries and public enterprises so this will be very important and this will be like a prelims question as well so under this fame two scheme the demand in uh, incentives they will be availed by the buyers okay and if you're talking about four focus areas of this scheme they are mainly focusing on technology development they are mainly focusing on demand creation in the market and they are coming up with some pilot projects and even they are mainly focusing on this charging infrastructures as well so these are the four areas they are mainly focusing on so if you're talking about what are the reasons for the recent increase in the demand for this electric vehicles so here what happened we are mainly focusing on some concerns regarding this climate change so if you're using conventional vehicles which are using some fossil fuels like for example petrol means they will be releasing greenhouse gases into atmosphere so because of this increasing of greenhouse concentration that will be also increasing global warming so because of this climate change concerns we are mainly moving towards this electric vehicles and next one is if you are talking about this lithium ion battery technology so the cost of this lithium ion battery technology had been decreased and government also started providing some incentives as well that is subsidies so because of this cost of the vehicle will be decreased so whenever this cost of this vehicle is decreased so people will be mainly uh, encouraged to go for buying of this project or this electric vehicles and vehicle companies battery manufacturers and material suppliers 
they are also vying with each other for the market share as well so because of all these reasons now there is increasing of demand for this electric vehicles in the market so we are talking about various government measures so what are the measures to taken by the government to promote this electric vehicles so this part will be important from your means okay so first important one is so government came with production linked incentive scheme for this auto sector so we came up in 2021 september okay in september 2021 our government came up with this uh, this is this pli that is production linked incentive scheme for this automobile sector and union cabinet also approved rupees 26058 crore production pro, uh, production linked incentive scheme and next one here is recently government also came up with this fame to amendment so under this a uh, fame to that is a uh, faster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicle scheme so government also reduced price gap okay it also reduced price gap between petrol power two wheelers and as well as electric ones so whenever this price which may not decrease means people they will be going for purchasing of this electric vehicles rather than this petrol pump vehicles and next one is government also came up with this scrappage policy so recently august august uh, in 2021 so here government launched this vehicle scrappage policy okay so in this vehicle scrappage policy here vehicles of more than so and so years they need to go for scrapping of those vehicles and this program which is mainly focusing to phase out polluting vehicles in the environment friendly manner and along with the center even state governments they have also leaving no stone unturned to promote this faster adoption of this electric vehicles in india so we are mainly focusing on increasing of penetration and adoption of this battery vehicles okay battery vehicles etc so here as of now around 20 states in india including delhi gujarat goa maharashtra rajasthan they have already come up with either a draft or final state level electric vehicle policies and if you are talking about what are the challenges that we are facing in this electric vehicles so first one is there is low penetration rates so what are the target we have that is that to be done in this 3 years so it is very very low so there is a very low penetration that is mainly seen in the in this sector that is electric vehicle sector and the whatever the cost which is mainly uh, required for the manufacturing of vehicle is very very high and the pay off is uncertain and local production of inputs for this electric vehicles uh, is it just about 35000 35 percentage of this total input production so local production that is we are saying that yes we are going for indigenization of this electric vehicles but only just 35 percentage of this total input production that is mainly going on in india and next one is production will be severely affected in terms of production cost as well so production cost is also very much high and uncertain policy environment and there is also lack of supporting infrastructure so they are some important major road blocks for this that is i can say they are challenges for this electric vehicles and what is the need so first one here is we need to focus on subsidizing vehicles to subsidizing batteries okay because batteries they will cost about 50 percentage of this electric vehicle cost and next one here is we can increase the focus on account of 6 70 percentage of vehicles in the country and consume the most of the fuel and next one here is we can go for establishment of this infrastructure that is charging infrastructure especially in the workplaces in this technical technological parks public bus depots multiplexes and some potential places where charging points could be installed okay so in this way we can increase the awareness for the people and even people uh, will come to uh, come across and they will be knowing about yes we have charging stations so and so areas so we can go for purchasing of this electric vehicles and corporates they could invest in change in charging stations as corporate social responsibility complexes and actually if you see we are having this lithium triangle in bolivia okay bolivia chile region okay bolivia argentina chile region we have this uh, uh, lithium triangle so in this context in this bolivia australia and chile so we could also go and become an important or uh, important buying oil fields okay so in this way we can also go for buying of this lithium fields that will be helpful in the near future so we're talking about today's main question is regarding discuss the challenges associated with this electric vehicle policies in india and answer should not be more than 150 words and now let us try to see next topic 
title says questioning the safety of ada so already we know about background regarding this topic already we discussed this topic two days ago so in this text and context there is a article regarding the questioning the safety of ada so we need to know what is the context and what is the background and we need to know some facts regarding this uidai okay so this article is important from our governance point of view which mainly comes in a gs paper too so actually in 2018 there was one question appeared in your prelims regarding this aadhar so please refer that question and try to solve that question uh, regarding this aadhar in your prelims 2018 so if you see the context it mainly says that two days after issuing an advisory okay advisory so what happened here uidai which mainly issued advisory that you should not share photocopies that is any image of your aadhar card any xerox copy of your aadhar card okay so after two days so first it came up with this advisory by uidai and after two days it mainly want to withdraw the notification so because of this there is a question of safety of aadhar which is seen in news so the government has withdrawn this uidai advisory and this advisor which is mainly caution this general public regarding sharing of photocopy of their aadhar card in with any organization so ministry of electronics and it that is mighty said that it is withdrawing the press release as it can lead to misinterpretation so if you see the background here so earlier notification which mainly asked that general public not to share the photography of any one's aadhar with any organization because what are the data which is present in that aadhar card that will be misused so we will be ha having personal data for example your name your father name your address okay those are things which are mainly present apart from that it will be also having this biometric data like your fingerprints and even your retina will be present in your aadhar card so you will be having personal data and as well as biometric data so whenever you are sharing this photocopy of your aadhar with any organization there is a threat of mis in mis uh, mis uh, use of your information so it also further added that we can go for using of this masked aadhar cards so masked aadhar cards means this aadhar card which will be having a 12 digit numbers right so here eight digits will be like appear in the star mark and only last digits okay will be appeared on the aadhar card so you can download this uh, masked aadhar card and you can use this a uh, photocopy of this aadhar card so this is the thing which mainly said so the notification also advised against using this public computer to download this electronic versions of this aadhar so only those organization with the user license from this uidai they can use uh, those systems and they can download their electronic masked aadhar masked aadhar cards so here hotels and cinemas halls they weren't authorized to collect any photocopies of aadhar so for example if there are some some movies will be there those those should be uh, watched only by adults that is a category movies so for the if you want to go for watching of those movies they will be asking aadhar card for the age proof right so in that conditions here this article says that uh, hostels and as well as cinemas halls they weren't authorized to collect this photocopies of aadhar so if we're talking about what is the stand of this uidai on sharing of this aadhar card details so uidai it is in multiple occasions which mainly stated that aadhar card details without biometric information they couldn't be used as impersonate a person so however it should remember that aadhar card is a document and it mainly contains the details of the person's personal information so hence here if you are going for giving out of your mobile number or bank account number or for pan card so if you are mainly using this aadhar card means that will leads to violation of this uh, privacy of the people okay so this is the thing which mainly said by uidai so if we talking about some facts regarding this uidai it is a statutory authority and this authority which mainly established under one act that is aadhar targeted delivery of financial and other subsidies benefits and services act of 2016 it is simply called as aadhar act of 2016 and has been established under administrative control of ministry of electronics and information technology that is mighty and uidi it was created to issue unique identification number okay that is called as aadhar to all residents in the country as on 31st october 
author which has issued okay one uh, 131.68 crore other numbers to residents of india so if you're talking about headquarters of this uida which is mainly in new delhi and uh, regional eight regional offices they are also present in the country so if we're talking about what are the roles and responsibilities of this uidai so under this aadhar act of 2016 here uidai which is responsible for aadhar enrollment and authentication so it is also focusing on developing of a policy procedure and system which is uh, mainly focusing on issuing of aadhar numbers to individuals and it is also focusing on performing of authentication and security of intents uh, in identity information and authentication information as well so now let us try to see next topic it is regarding united nations report on this taliban regime so this article will be important regarding your gs paper to under international relations and now let's try to see this topic in a very great detail so recently united nations came up with a report on this taliban regime in afghanistan so a new report from this analytical support and sanctions monitoring team of united nations security council which mainly says that foreign terrorist organization they continue to enjoy safe haven under this new taliban regime so under this new taliban regime in this afghanistan so here terrorist groups they are mainly enjoying the safe haven things so if you are talking about this report which mainly says that because of some financial constraints and possibly under the political pressure they are not to embrace the uh, taliban internationally but the terrorist groups they are currently in consultation mode and not likely to launch a major attack outside this afghanistan before 2023 because they are mainly having some financial constraints and if you are talking about threat to india whether we are having threat yes of course so two india focused terrorist groups that is jaish e mohammed and as well as l e t lashkar e taiba they are reported to have training camps in afghanistan so how many training camps for this uh, jaish e mohammed so it is maintaining eight training camps in this nangarh okay out of this three were under direct control of taliban and this one is l e t lashkar e taiba was also said to maintain three camps in this region as well so both groups they mainly enjoy the close links with this taliban leadership okay and they are mainly going to have an history to provide finance and as well as uh, training expertise to this taliban operations and if you are talking about this report which also says that aqis that is al qaeda in al qaeda in indian subcontinent so it has about 180 to 400 fighters in afghanistan so fighters they mainly included nationals from bangladesh india myanmar and as well as pakistan So these are some important details which are mainly said by this report. Okay, and next one here is this Al Qaeda in Indian subcontinent magazine from this Nawa I Afghan Jihad to Nawa E Gazwa E Hind, which mainly suggested that they are mainly refocusing on this Kashmir. So not only this, they are also having other terror groups like TTP, that is Tariq E Taliban Pakistan. they mainly constitute the largest component of this foreign terrorist fighters in afghanistan and the numbers are estimated about 3000 members to 4000 members and they are mostly located among the east and as well as south east afghanistan pakistan border areas so among all the foreign extremist groups in afghanistan so it is the ttp that is tehreek e taliban pakistan which has benefited the most from this taliban's take over so this is about this report and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding indus water talks so what happened here so recently india and pakistan negotiators they mainly ended another round of talks regarding this indus water treaty so actually if you see here why this indus water talks or is news because we are mainly going for run on uh, runaway project on this river chena so let me know the name of the project we already have studied that project so because of that there are number of concerns are mainly posed by this pakistan so because of this we are having this indus water talks so we're talking about context it mainly says that indian and pakistani negotiators they ended another round of talks they ended another round of talks as part of this indus water treaty okay So this is the thing which mainly said by our external affairs minister, 
and he made a describing this is 118th meeting of this permanent indus commission okay so if we are talking about details it mainly says that ministry of external affairs did not give any details or on the issues that we have mainly had some discussions including pakistan request for flood flow data sharing and as well as objections uh, to this hydro power projects which are mainly planned on this western rivers in jammu and kashmir so you have to know what are these western rivers and as well as eastern rivers then only you can understand this so now let us try to see some background so if you are talking about indus river basin which is mainly containing of six rivers indus jhelum chenab ravi bias and satluj so they are mainly originated from this tibet and flowing through himalayan ranges and finally they are entering into this pakistan finally they will be drained in this arabian sea region so both the sides they are mainly dependent that is from the indian side and from pakistan side so both the countries they are dependent on the water okay in this indus river basin okay they are mainly using water for irrigation and as well as infrastructure etc so finally we came up with this inter domain accord of uh, may 1948 and it was accepted accepted or adopted by these two countries so after the meetings for the conference has done so they decided that india would simply water to pakistan in exchange for annual payment which is made by the pakistan but this agreement however which soon disintegrated into the both the sides and both the countries did not accept it on this common interpretations and later in 1951 okay it is a back drop of this water sharing dispute so both countries they applied to this world bank for the funding for this respect to irrigation projects on this rivers in this and as well as its tributaries so finally in september 1960 they came up with this agreement okay regarding this in this water treaty or in this water sharing so if you see the map here so here we have this is industry but this is a jhelum river this is chenab ravi satluj and as well as bias so these are the important rivers in this rivers uh, indus river system so if you are talking about eastern rivers we have rbs you can remember this rbs that is ravi bias and satluj and the western rivers icj okay icj that is indus uh, chenab and jhelum jhelum so on this chenab we are going for this building of hydro power project So, if we are talking about some key provisions of this Indus Water Treaty, so this treaty which mainly prescribed how water from the six rivers of Indus River System that will be shared between India and Pakistan, how they are going for sharing of water between India and Pakistan. It also allocated three western rivers that is I C J Indus, Chenab, and Jhelum to Pakistan, and they can use the waters from these western rivers unlimitedly. Okay. so unrestricted use of the water from this indus chenab and jhelum so by india the three river systems uh, that we have that is eastern river system r b s ravi b s and c uh, satluj they were allocated for unrestricted use for india so here in this way we can say like 80 percentage of the share of the water that is mainly tap and also they mainly came up with this requirement of this permanent indus commission and later on we came with the constitution of this permanent indus commission so the important functions of this commission it is to include serving a forum of exchange of information on the rivers as well so if we are talking about hydro power projects whether india have permission to build power project yes yes on this western flowing rivers of this jhelum chenab and index So an extra aid which mainly allows India to build out, ah, uh, build out ah uh, for this run of the river project. So run of the river project is nothing but. So if you are talking about hydro power projects, so normally if you want to go for building of hydro power projects, so we need to stop the flow of the water and we need to store the large amount of the water in the dams. And later on, whenever we are releasing the water, so whenever water is releasing, so that will be mainly turning this turbines. Okay, the turbines will be turned. So because of this turning of these turbines, we can generate the electricity. That is called as hydro electricity. But here, what is the condition in this run of the river projects? So on this run of the river projects, here we are not going to store the large amount of water. So whenever the river which is mainly flowing on this river, so we will be storing a very little amount of water. So whenever the rivers are flowing, so with this flow, this will be moving the turbine so that we can generate this high electricity. That is hydro power. Okay. So in this way here, hydro power projects which are mainly built on this 
river okay so we have the permission that we can build this hydropower project that is run of the river projects in this in this western flowing river so here what happened whenever we came up with the proposal for the building of uh, hydropower projects on this uh, chenab river so here pakistan says that we are violating this indus water treaty so because of this this is in news and this treaty will also allows pakistan to raise objections over such projects being built by india and it does not find them to be complaint with the specifications so if india which is mainly coming up with any project which is mainly violating means yes pakistan also have the uh, have the right to raise the objections so india has to share information on the project design and alterations made to um, what are the alterations we are meeting so we need to share the information with the pakistan's according to this agreement and next topic here is quarter 4 gdp growth decelerates to 4.1 percentage so it is talking about gdp so what is a gdp that is gross domestic product so gross domestic product is nothing but so the total value of final goods and services that are mainly produced within a territory within one year of time that is called as gdp so gdp uh, for example uh, we are having one year that is 12 months so we are dividing 3 months okay into one quarter and there are finally four quarters so this article which is talking about fourth quarter gdp so fourth quarter gdp growth which mainly decelerates to 4.1 percentage so this article is important from your economy point of view so if you are talking about context it mainly says that india's gross domestic product growth which mainly slowed to four quarter low of 4.1 percentage okay so here manufacturing which had been having some impact so if you are talking about details it mainly says that gross value addition in the economy which mainly estimated to have grown 8.1 percentage in 2021 to 2022 and is slightly lower than the projection of this national statistical office that is 8.3 percentage and the gdp shrunk which is mainly seen that is 6.6 percentage in this 2020 to 2021 so here you need to know about the methods for estimation of this gdp so we are having three methods income method expenditure methods and gross value added method and you have to refer those three methods for sure okay and if you move forward even some other sectors like contact dependent sectors and employment intensive trade hotels transport communication services they had mainly facing some even uh, low growth because of this uh, covid 19 effect and next topic it is regarding kerala high court allows lesbians to live together so this article which is mainly talking about habeas corpus so actually one habeas corpus which mainly filed by one person okay so because of this here kerala high court came up with a judgment so this article is very important from your polity point of view especially if there is any infringement of fundamental rights is happening so here we have one article that is article 32 of indian constitution which mainly talks about rights so we are having five rights habeas corpus mandamus prohibition certiorari okay so here you have to know what's the difference between each and every writ so this writs will be very important from your prelims point of view and now let us try to see context so a division bench of kerala high court on tuesday which mainly allowed a woman to go along with her lesbian friend and to live together after they expressed their willingness to live together okay after expressing their will to live together here here kerala high court which mainly gave the permission to the woman to stay with her lesbian friend so actually here if you are talking about details so bench which mainly passed oh, this order while allowing this habeas corpus petition actually this petition which mainly for which mainly filed by a lesbian that is adila nazreen of uh, aluwa alleging that her lover fatima nu, uh, nura of this kozi code had allegedly detained by the parents and the, the parents of this person that is nura they are mainly searching for the matches and they want to marry their girl okay their girl but what happened this habeas corpus petition which is mainly filed by this nazreen they pointed that she was a lesbian by choice and they want to have a relationship and they want to stay together okay so we're talking about this habeas corpus in the latin word okay actually actually it is a latin term so it means to have a body of so under this the court can issue an order to a person who has detained another person to produce a body of later okay before it 
and if you're talking about this writ which is mainly focusing on individual liberty against arbitrary detention and here this can be issued against public and as well as even private individuals but there are some exceptions where we can't use this writ that is whenever detention is lawful whenever the proceedings it is for the contempt of legislature of a court or whenever the detention is by contempt okay competent court and detention it is outside the jurisdiction of court so in this cases we can't go for issuing of this habeas corpus and now let's try to see yesterday's questions so first question it is mainly regarding regarding a minister a minister who is not a member of uh, either house cannot participate in the proceedings but he can participate but within six months of time period he need to become the member of either house either upper house or lower house so first statement is incorrect and second one is advocate general of state can take part in the proceedings of any of the house despite he is being not the member either of the houses yes this second statement is correct so correct option will be two and next here next question is regarding money bill so it can be introduced in either house of state legislature for example if it is a bicameral legislature we will be having vidhan sabha and vidhan parishad so your statement says that here this money bill can be introduced in in the both the house that is vidhan sabha and as well as vidhan parishad but it can be introduced only vidhan sabha but not vidhan parishad right and next one is it is considered as a government bill yes and the legislative council can the maximum delay of passage of bill by 14 days yes governor enjoys suspense veto he is not enjoying the veto because because this bill will be introduced with the recommendation of governor so he will be not enjoying any veto so the correct option will be 2 and 3 only okay so these are the today's questions and now let us try to see today's questions so first question is regarding puducherry and delhi so Puducherry and Delhi are the only two union territories. Uh, they have the legislatures of their own. So as of now, what happened if you're talking about union territories? So even Jammu and Kashmir, after this bifurcation of elsewhere state of Jammu and Kashmir also, also we came up with this uh, union territory of Jammu and Kashmir, which is having legislature. So this question, which is, um, which is mainly framed before this uh, bifurcation of Jammu and Kashmir so please don't make it wrong okay so you have to know about the legislator legislatures of this Puducherry and Delhi so Puducherry and Delhi are not only the two okay these are the two union territories that are having legislature of their own so in this in this context you have to read the statements and the next question is regarding special status special status to a particular state so will be given right so you have to read the statements and give me the correct option so these are the today's questions and now let us try to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF without any delay. So this is our today's Hindu. Okay, so the date here is June 1st, 2022 and here you can see this is a Delhi edition. So the first article it is regarding GDP growth. So I already discussed about this topic of this GDP growth. So GDP growth which mainly decelerates. Decelerates means we can see there is decreasing of growth. So decreasing of growth of 4.1 percentage that we can see here. Okay, so this is the first article that already I discussed in detail. And next article it is regarding GST dues. So center clears rupees 86,912 crores of GST dues. Okay, so what is the GST dues? Why center need to give this GST uh, dues to states? So here it is nothing but the compensation. Compensation that need to be given by the center to the states because of implementation of this uh, GST. One nation, one tax in year 2017. Here center promised the growth rate of 14% to the states. So whenever there is any shortfall is happening, center will be compensating. So this is about this topic. And next topic is regarding the Satyendra Jain. Satyendra Jain sent to ED custody till June 9th. So this article is very important and actually he alleged in some money laundering and hawala case. And the next topic here it is Lingayat and Dalit communities they take objection to new textbooks. So this article here you need to focus on this Lingayats they will be coming in your ancient history. And next topic it is regarding June September rainfall likely to be 103 percentage it is about the estimates of this IMD okay 
so here monsoon rain fall from june to september it is likely to be more than the forecast by this imd so we are going to get a good rainfall in this year monsoon and here there is a article regarding rajya sabha elections so you have to know the procedure for this elections in this rajya sabha so this will be important from your prelims and if you move forward if you move forward here you can see the article regarding this high courts allows lesbians to live together i discussed this topic and if you move forward you can see this editorial page here i discussed about this parari volant case and there is one article regarding this aadhar safety i discussed this topic and here there is one article regarding the civil service result so you can go through that ones i discussed regarding this electric vehicles article and in this text and context i discussed regarding this safety of aadhar i discussed regarding this united report on this taliban and if you move forward today june 1st it is a world's milk day so you have to remember this if you are preparing for any other state service examinations and regarding this indus water talks i discussed this topic and if you move forward there is one article regarding india china to hold the next round of talks okay regarding this disengagement of patrolling point 15 in hot springs region and if you move forward you can see here one article regarding india in india we need to work okay working to build a new india not world bank so this is the thing which mainly said by our prime minister whenever he releases 11th installment of this pm kisan scheme so here you need to know about some facts regarding this pm kisan scheme so under this here uh, here farmers they, they will be getting getting a uh, money of about 6000 rupees that will be given in two uh, three equal installments that is 2000 in each installment and next article it is regarding ministry bring out guidelines to manage this monkey pox cases so you have to know about this monkey pox and some details that is facts i already discussed number of times and here european union bans majority of russian oil imports so please go through this article once and this one is israel signs uae free trade deal it is the first arab world in the first arab world so this is one important thing and one important development in this arab countries and next article it is regarding physical deficit improved to 6.7 percentage in financial year so you have to know what is the meaning of physical deficit let me know what is this physical deficit in the comment box and next one here it, it is regarding core sector production grew by 8.4 percentage and this core sector mainly includes f e r n s 3 c that is eight or mainly present in this uh, four sector like fertilizer electricity refineries natural gas and steel coal cement okay coal cement and crude oil so they are mainly comes in this core sector so core sector production which mainly grew you have to know about index of industrial production so number of times we discuss this topic and next one is china unveils stimulus policies to support virus hit economy okay so what are the steps which are mainly taken by china we have to know because in the same way we can also include implement some steps in india such that we can also focus on recovery of our economy so these are the some important articles that appear in this today's hindu newspaper so before winding up i want to make a small announcement so we in rathor says we came up with this entire foundation course for 2023 and 2024 so this will be uh, very very important and we are providing validity of 2 years for these courses and these are the recent updated videos with this uh, current affairs recent even recordings are going on going on so here in this courses i am taking personally geography and as well as ethics these are my core subjects so here there are wide range of faculty there are expert faculty so they are teaching the subjects so they are dealing with the prelims and as well as mains questions as well which are appearing in the previous years such that you will be getting some idea and we are focusing on constitutional clarity so totally there are more than 600 hours of classes okay so please try to enroll these courses and if you want to see the individual courses you can also take individual courses like only geography only ethics economy history like that okay so if you want to see the demo videos you can visit our website rathorsisacademy.com and you have to register with your email id and you can watch the three demo videos without paying a single penny so after watching the demo videos only you can go for payment for the courses and we are also coming up with mains answer writing course of this june batch 
so students it is a good opportunity to do join this course it is a one year course and in this one year i will assure you that you are going to complete your entire gs portion and you are going to write a question in each and every topic of your syllabus with the current fis also included so this course is absolutely benefit and the cost of this course is 7200 rupees for one year and the registrations are already opened and admissions are going on so please try to join this course and if you have any doubt you can call me on this number 8074765513 and if you want to get the pdf of this class you can join the telegram channel link is given in description box so by this i'm concluding thank you so much go to google and type rathod's is then you can see our website rathod's is academy there you have to click on login or register in the blue color so if you have not registered yet you have to click on do not have account and fill the details you have to give your name email id your mobile number and password and finally you can click on this register button and once your details are filled then registration will be successful and click on okay and come back and click again on login and register and you have to log in now so after once you have log in click on the courses there you can see course list and in this course list you can see wide range of courses so you can see indian his indian society is he sat ethics international relations essay and if you buy all the courses then we will be giving access to all these courses like history economy geography and this is our mains answer writing course there you can see different batches are there and this is our prelims test series if you want to watch demo videos you have to click on play course and in history we will be having five modules so there if you want to see demo videos in that so and so part of history you can click on that play course and before payment you can see only three demo videos and after payment you can see all the videos will be displayed on the screen You will Hello be students. having Welcome settings regarding IAS. quality and My also speed. You can adjust faculty. according to Today, your the part of the world history lectures. The most important topic history. in the world history of the UPSC CSC exam that is the French Next, Revolution. Let us try to see other subject. International relations. Click on play courses, and the same thing that will follows. Before payment, three demo videos. After payment, every video will be displayed on screen. and you can click on the play button then full screen and then settings so this will be follows to all hello all welcome to the lecture a very important topic we are going to cover up in today's lecture that is indo pacific every day in newspaper we are hearing this word indo pacific region and the important this is regarding polity and the faculty is shashwat raghu ma'am Hello and welcome everyone to Rathor's IS. This is Shashwat Raghav, your Polity faculty on this platform. We'll be basically covering our GS Paper Two, and we very well know in GS Paper Two we have governance, constitution, polity, along with social justice and IR. By me, your constitution, polity, and governance subjects will be covered. In GS, in UPSC side for GS Paper Two. only the subjects have been mentioned the governance constitution polity but faculties this is about economy so economy is taught by servant sir so these are some demo videos you can watch like this an economy Welcome which is like 112 hours of uh, course friends from this class on work hi friends my name is sarvan kumar i am your economic faculty welcome to rathod's ias friends in this class we are going to study about the gross value added what is the meaning of this gross value added now under this we have three heads basic price right factor
and next is science and technology you can click on the video and you can click on play button and full screen welcome to rathod is linked to the dna that uh, kind of bank is called as a dna data bank so you need to create a dna data bank at a national level okay where the information of all the uh, criminals okay all the suspects okay. So these are the number of courses that you can watch the demo videos and after once you watch the demo videos and after once you satisfied so click on the buy now button and after that you need to enter some details later on you can click on proceed and you can give your mobile number and also email id and finally you can use this razor pay payment system for the purchasing of these courses